How to bring a VB application into Visual Builder Studio? We'll start by creating a new project, give your project a name. You can, of course, give description and other aspects. We're going to start with a pure empty project, so uh, nothing chosen in the template. And once you click Finish, Visual Builder Studio would go over and start provisioning the project with all the infrastructure that you need in order to manage the development process for your Visual Builder application. This includes uh, the ability to create Git, issue tracking, and other aspects. We'll start by going over to the environments part and mapping our project to an instance of Visual Builder. Uh, you give a name to the environment, for example, this might be your development environment. And then when you click uh, Next, you'll be able to add a Visual Builder instance or an Oracle Integration Cloud instance into your project. And um, so over here, you can see I have a lot of Visual Builder instances. I'm going to pick one and simply use that as the place where I'm going to actually develop and test my application. Once I added an instance of the Visual Builder Runtime, I can go over to the Designer tab and I can click to create a new workspace, which would be my local copy of the code. So I'm going to give it a name and then I'm going to use the Import from File option. Over here, I'm going to click and choose a zip file, which is the export I did from a regular Visual Builder instance. So the export of the application over here. I'm going to create a Git repository to host this code, so give it a name, and I'm also going to create a branch where I'm going to do my work, so give that one a name. Click Finish would get your code into the Git repository and would then open your application in the visual development experience that you're used to, plus the features that Visual Builder Studio offers, such as the Git tab. So there are two things you would want to change in your application setting. The first one is you want to give your application a root URL. This would be the root URL that is used when deploying the application. So give it a name. This change is saved inside the visual application JSON file that you can see over here. And over here, you would also want to add one more property, which is a version number for your application. This version number is something that you would want to increase every time that you go um, and uh, produce a, a new version of the application, a live version that you're going to release. So I'm going to start with 1.0. You can use any numbering over here. Once you did those changes, you can push those changes into your Git repository. So again, I'm currently working on a branch. You can see the name of the branch at the top. And I'm pushing those changes into this branch. If I'm happy with those changes and I don't have any other changes I want to do at this point of time, I can press the Publish button and then I can um, merge those into the master branch. Again, an option here is to go through the merge request process, which I'm going to do here. So just give information about what you're merging over here. Choose yourself as a reviewer, for example, over here and click Publish. This would create a merge request for your code. So let's go back to our project by clicking over here. And when I created the workspace, along with it, Visual Builder Studio created two build jobs to package and deploy my application. Okay. Um, you would want to configure the deploy step to provide the correct username and password for the Visual Builder environment that you added. Okay, so if you go over here to the steps, you can see we have a username and a password fields, and you need to provide the username and password that would be used to deploy your application to this environment. Okay, and you can also control here, for example, whether you're um, publishing with a version, which is kind of equivalent to the stage that we had before, or without a version, which is kind of publishing a live application. Okay, so now we set this up. We can go and look at our merge request over here. And when you click on it, by the way, one of the things you'll be able to see is the actual files that were changed and the code that you changed, which are those two entries. If I'm happy with those changes, I can approve them. 
like that. And then I can merge this into my master branch again. So I'm taking the changes from the branch I was working on, putting them into the master branch. So anyone who picks up the latest version of the code would be able to pick up those changes. Once I do this, this would queue up a build process. So you can see the build is in our queue. It's going to be picked up by our build executors and it's going to execute. You can see it started executing. What I'm doing here is I'm just going over to show you the configuration. This build is queued up because we have a connection to the Git and to the master branch. And what this build step does is take our application, optimize it and package it into a zip file that we can then use to deploy to Visual Builder instances. Okay, so we'll wait this um, build to finish. Okay, it finished successfully, it's green. And because it's part of a pipeline, it automatically fires up a next step, which is the deploy. And we can actually see that the deploy failed here. So let's go over and look at the log. Uh, the log would give you exact information on why things failed. In our case, it failed because there's already an application with the specific name that we gave in our root URL on the server. And that's because I did the demo before. So what I'm going to do is very easily, I'm going to go over and switch the name of the application, um, the root URL to a different URL. And again, I can do it from the designer like I did before. And I can also do it directly in the Git repository. So let's do that. We'll go to the Git repository where we can see our code. I'm right now on the master branch. I'm going over to the visual application JSON file. I can see the change I made over here and I can overwrite it, do another change, for example, now calling it uh, with the number two at the end. Okay. Then I'm committing the changes. Um, again, I'm committing directly into master right now, something you generally shouldn't be doing, but that's fine for this sample. And this, of course, would again fire up the build process um, for our code. So let's go over and look at our build. You can see our package step is now executing, again, picking up the code change, putting it into the zip file, optimizing the application and giving us an artifact that we can then go over and deploy. And once it finished, it queues up the deploy step. This would pick up our zip file and push it in into the VB environment we have. And this time you can see it finished successfully. You can go and look at the log over here to see the URL of the application that was published. Another place where you can see this is if you go to your environment, you look at the environment that you added before and look at the deployment tab, you'll be able to see all the deployments you did over to that environment. In our case, we have this application over here. We have a link to the application that shows the web app over here. And if I click on it, I would actually open my application that has been automatically deployed using Visual Builder Studio. So that's basically the process of taking an existing Visual Builder application, bringing it into Visual Builder Studio, and then leveraging Visual Builder Studio to do further development and automating the whole deployment process.